Welcome to the first video in our new series, which I'm calling In-Depth Topics. The purpose of these videos will be to explain or explore a little more deeply into certain game development techniques that may be a little more difficult to grasp for beginners. Most of them will be math related, but they may also cover other things that come up or that viewers ask for. Um, one other thing, I'll be using Python and Pygame for these videos, but the subjects themselves will apply to any language you might be working in, so hopefully, hopefully they'll help out anyone who wants to understand a little bit more about game development. Okay, in this video I want to talk about movement. So I've made a brief Pygame program here, which is going to pop up a little sprite. So this yellow square is going to be our player and we want to talk about how to make it move around the screen. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this and part of it will depend on what kind of game you're making but there are some universal things you have to take into account. So to start with let's talk about the simplest kind of movement. I want to use the arrow keys to move in the four directions. So that means that in my update portion of my, or my update method of my sprite, I want to set the VX and the VY, so the speed, to zero, okay? So it's not going to be moving unless I press a key. So I'm going to get the key state. This is get pressed. That tells me which keys are pressed down. And now I'm going to tell it what to change depending on which key I press. So for example, if the up key is pressed, then I want my VY to be negative, and I'm going to use 5 for this. And we'll talk about how you pick a speed uh, in a little bit, but we'll just stick with 5 as a, a good number to start with. Now I also want to do the other four, or sorry, the other three arrow keys. So I'm going to just copy and paste this and what we want to change is I want to only move in the four directions. So I only want one of these to be the case. So I'm going to change these to elifs. And now if we press the down arrow key then our vy needs to be positive. If we press the left then our vy needs to be, or sorry, our v x needs to be negative, and if we press the right arrow key, if we press the right arrow key, then our vx would be positive 5. And then we just tell it that we want the rectangle, the sprite's bounding box, just to move at that speed. So we just add the velocity to the position. So we start out in the middle of the screen. If I press the down arrow key, Y will increase by 5 pixels. These are pixels. And I'll move down. So what that will look like is this. And see, as I press the keys, I can move in one of the four directions. So this is your simplest form of movement called four-way movement, which, if you've ever played Pac-Man or anything like that, looks very familiar to you. Now, four-way movement is great if your game is based on a grid and it's something like Pac-Man or Snake or something like that where you only want the player to move in the four directions. But what about if you want to go diagonally? Well, we could very simply just take these elifs and turn them back into ifs. Now, if I hold down up and left at the same time, then my VX and my VY are both going to be set. And this is what's called eight-way movement, and it allows you to move diagonally. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to pull down two, and you can see I'm moving diagonally. But now we run into our first snag, and this is a mathematical problem. Watch what happens when I start moving to the right, and then I'm going to press up. Do you see how I'm moving faster? The problem with diagonal movement on a grid and since our screen is a grid of pixels, we're always moving on a grid, is that diagonals will be faster than horizontal and vertical movement, the way we're doing it. And the reason for that has to do with Pythagoras. So let's look at a picture here. 
So if we're trying to move one pixel in the X and one pixel in the Y, then really what we've done is we moved from this point to this point. And how far is that? Well, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the distance or the length of the diagonal is the square root of the sum of the other two sides squared, which comes out to be the square root of 2, or about 1.4. So instead of moving one pixel, we moved effectively 1.4 pixels in distance. And that's why it looks like we're moving faster. And in our example, where our speed is 5, you can see the answer comes out to be 5 times the square root of 2. That's how far we moved, somewhere around 7. But what we really want is we want to move a distance of 5, even if we're going diagonal, which means we're going to need to divide by the square root of 2. Whatever our speed is, if we divide by the square root of 2, we'll keep it at the same length. So to fix this, all we need to do is, before we move, make sure we adjust our vx and vy if we're going diagonal. So if both of them are not 0, right? we only want to do this if we're going diagonal. So if both of them are not 0, then I just want to take them both and divide by the square root of 2. I'm just going to use 1.414. Um, sometimes you may see uh, programmers do it this way. Instead of dividing by the square root of 2, they multiply by point, uh, 0.7071, which is the exact same thing. You can do it whichever way you prefer, but we are just dividing by the square root of 2 and getting our diagonal so now if I run it, you'll see that whatever direction we go in, the speed is the same. And that is proper fixed eight-way movement. In the next video, we'll talk about some of the issues you can run into with pixel-based movement like this, um, mainly that Pixel positions are whole numbers, so you can't move half a pixel. And that limits that can limit your movement quite a bit and cause some strange things to happen that you don't expect. And we'll talk about how you can deal with those problems as well. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give them a thumbs up. That really helps other people find them. And if you're not subscribed, please do so so you don't miss any new videos as they come out. See you next time.